everyone. It's Cindy and Dale. Hi, Dale. Hi there. Oh, hi, Cindy. Hi, down here. How are you? <laughs> we're good. We're modeling imperfection. We're trying a little Zoom thing and we're recording it and we're psyched. This is our December version of Every Day. Yeah, yeah, we've been talking for a while, right? That uh, should we do something, not do no. something? And, yeah. and not not that we felt like we had a ton to say, but I no. think it kind of came down to, I really wanted to know what everyone else was doing and yes. what everyone else had to say. Yes. If there's anyone out there. Yeah. Speaking for myself, I have had no deep thoughts during this particular time, so... <laughs> I'm glad that we reached out and, and uh, we are happy to have heard from um, quite a few of you. So um, yeah, exciting. really good stuff. Yeah. And these videos, so much. I love it. And the women. So we have great videos from uh, Katie O'Connell and Michelle Maher and Terry Baron Kulat. Yes. Yes. But first, Cindy, I think you made us a little video, didn't I, you? Kind of I what you've been up to. I did. And I, when I said that I've not been up to a whole lot, you know, that is yeah. kind of what this reflects. So well, here's my video. Have, well, we have to say our theme is oh, yeah. in, instead of hindsight is 2020, yeah. uh, here and now is 2020. Yes. So I'll introduce you. Okay. Yes. Here is Cindy Roseley here and now in 2020. Greetings, Everyday Deep friends. It's me, Cindy, coming to you from the comfort of my home, because let's face it, where else would I be, right? So, here and now, in 2020, what's gotten me through? Well, you know, when the pandemic hit and life came to a standstill, it became quite clear to me quite early that without the structure of my outside activities, things were pretty much going to go off the rails here. So I doubled down on the self-discipline and established some pretty solid routines. First off, rise with the sun, up and at them. Spend time in silence and meditation. Healthy breakfast, the most important meal of the day. Go away! Exercise, gotta keep the body moving. Your speed. So right here. Uh, Reese, you got 15 seconds left, man. Let's go. Yeah, that's a hell no. Don't forget to This pandemic has also brought the added blessing of more quality time with the family. Family happy hour! Five o'clock! Family happy hour! Who's up for a little family happy hour? Time for family happy hour. Two of my kids came home from college early, and it's been just such a joy to have more time with them. Good morning. I thought we would take advantage of you being home by perhaps doing some decluttering and some deep cleaning here. Nowhere to go, nothing to do, not a problem. More quality time with my husband, too. I am very proud of my efforts to keep in touch with my friends, too. I worked hard on creating high quality birthday videos for many of them during this time, making sure that I took the time to craft each message so that it was highly unique and personal to them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Anna. Elizabeth. You're so new. Happy birthday, dear Julie. Happy birthday to you. No, you. So as you can see, it's been a very productive year over here. So keep laughing. Be kind to yourself. After all, we're all just doing the best that we can. And cheers to a new year full of new possibilities. <laughs> okay. Okay. So 
Thank you for sharing that with us, Cindy. That was really great. Yeah. A lot I, of, I just, a lot of I just have one problem. There's mm -hmm. just one problem with your video. Yeah. Um, my birthday was in August. Uh, you know what? Ugh, I knew that was going to come <laughs> up. You know, and I, I said, you know, I do, I'm doing this compilation of my silly birthday videos. And if you didn't get a silly birthday video from me, you're probably going to feel bad. You know what, though, I physically came to your house that day. You stayed 20 feet away from me, but I did come. And I, that was the one time, guys, that I've seen Dale was on, on her I'm birthday. Dying. Yeah. <laughs> I brought you a scone and delicious yeah that's was, true that was so much better to get the in person so thank you again yeah. for that cindy yeah <laughs> you're welcome yeah. <laughs> so what have you been up to why don't you tell her fill everybody in how have you been coping well i finally did you know that huge like picture video project mm. that you only <laughs> think about right as you're going to sleep and you think oh my god what if all my pictures are lost forever yeah yeah so I finally did put it all up in the cloud, wherever that is. So I, I didn't organize it, but that's the first step. So yeah. I feel good about that. That's the cloud. The cloud. <laughs> and then I have been working on a writing project that is uh, near and dear to my heart. So I've loved having the time to do it. Yeah. And then I've realized what a great thing that I have something to fill the time, you know? Right. So, yeah, but I know a lot, um, you know, some of the people we heard from and other people I've talked to, this has been a good time for that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Some creative pursuits, that kind of thing. Right. Now, yeah. We did hear from, um, we heard from Yvonne Malone. Um, we've got some pictures here of some of the beautiful quilts and textile designs that she's made um, over these past months. We really appreciate that. So beautiful. Um, we also heard from Anne Sassano. Uh, she sent a picture of her great dog, Tula. She, they've been doing virtual therapy dog reading sessions with um, fourth graders. Um, I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, and speaking of dogs, a lot of people got pets uh, during this pandemic lockdown. Mary Ellen Mindel said that while she and her husband sadly had to cancel um, all of their travel plans, they had some cool uh, plans to go to, to Europe uh, because of the virus not able to go, she reached out to a rescue group about fostering a dog during this time. So this is a photo of Kobe. Who Mary I know Kobe, by yeah, the way. You do? Yeah. So, cutest dog ever. Don't tell my dog, but cutest dog oh, ever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we also got an email from Barb Turk. Very happy to hear from Barb, um, who uh, told us about how just kind of simple pleasures, gratitude and, uh, for family and friends has really um, sustained her during this time. So appreciate hearing, hearing from Yeah, because this, this has been a hard and challenging time for a lot of people. Yeah. So um, it's a privilege, right? To work on these projects and things, but all the while knowing, right? That there are a lot of people struggling. So our hearts yeah. go out um, to all those people. Yes. Um, you know, one of the emails that we got actually inspired me to do something. Yeah. Uh, Mary Parks uh, said that she had um, decided to learn Italian uh, during this time, because I, once COVID is over, she wants to travel to Italy to see her cousins. So yeah. she's going to be well practiced and able to talk to them. Yeah. So it reminded me that I have always wanted to learn to play an instrument. Mm. And piano sounds just really way too hard. Yeah. So on Amazon, I got this. Um, it's, it's called a steel drum. Oh, want to hear me play? Sing? I do. Yes. There's only one problem. You, you, you can't see, but there's eight little things. Yeah. And three of those eight numbers are missing. So when, when I go to my little book to play my song and I go like, you know, five, five, one, the three is missing. 
Like it's but not I, physically on the drum? No. no, they, I have like two fives and two sixes, but no four and no seven. So I'm going to have to send that back. Wow. Or, you know, the whole thing is about your brain, training your brain, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So if I train, will I get even that much smarter if I do it with the wrong numbers, do you think? I, I don't know. It sounds like a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, wow. Well, good for you on that. I'm glad yeah. you're working your brain. Yeah. Well, next time you see me at Everyday Deep, I'm going to play y'all songs. So oh, that's yeah. my, that's my promise. Definitely. Definitely. All right. So we've got a video. Oh, Gabe. <laughs> oh my God. I said I'm recording. Anyway, I guess that we're still modeling imperfection. So, yes. So our next, you know, this might help you, Dale, with your frame of mind on, on uh, that learning of new things. Our, our next video is from Katie O'Connell. We're going to take a walk with her. Um, she's going to talk to us about how this process of learning and growing is really what's important. The process of it. Yeah. As opposed, to the end, as opposed to the end result. So good on you. So we'll play that now. My name is Katie O'Connell, and I was so tickled to have a great conversation with Dale today, talking about some of the surprises and lessons from these last several months, many months, golly, how many months now? And uh, we had a great conversation just about how the process is very different for each of us. And when she asked me, well, what's one of the things that you've been doing? I said, I walk the same route every day. And she kind of chuckled over, well, that's par for the course right now, isn't it? But one of the reasons I have been doing that is because it's really become a prayerful and mindful practice for me to um, maintain awareness of even when things seem the same, how things do change along the way. And because of that, I've really gleaned a lot of lessons as I've taken this same route um, pretty much every single day. The things I have seen, the patterns that have emerged, um, the good, the bad, the ugly, the things that people have set to the curb to put away, um, the arguments that you overhear sometimes when you walk past someone. Anyway, it got us kind of discussing process. So I'm going to share a little bit as I walk my route today on something that's been a process for me. I am a writer and a writing consultant and soon after the COVID lockdown hit, I found, um, other than finishing up some ongoing projects, I really was struggling to keep my business going. I was struggling to find um, energy toward it. I was struggling with motivation. And like all of us, we had our own situations going. You know, some of us have ill parents, some of us have um, job loss, economic hardship, any number of things can be going on over and above this COVID thing. And I had some of those too, and I just found I really couldn't, I was struggling to keep going. Through my walking, I realized I was reflecting a lot, and I started writing a blog post on this. Um, what I noticed, how it all belongs. Even the tough stuff belongs in our lives. And what's funny is that blog post was started probably six months ago, and it's still not completed. Talk about being in the process. So when I discussed this with Dale, we were talking about how we've been so driven for productivity and our modern world focuses on that. You know, that's very tangible. Um, the end product, the finished blog, the finished book, the finished project, whatever it is. 
and yet the process has such value for deepening us. And if we overlook the process, we overlook how that's helping us to grow and to learn. So, see, I've gotten to know everybody. I'm stopping to wave now. <laughs> um, I guess my greatest lesson of this time truly is the fact that being in the process and being mindful of being in the process has currently for me more um, joy, more depth, more opportunity, and letting go of feeling that the productivity is more important, that the productivity is the way I am measured, it's the way I am judged, it's um, the way I am valued. I don't believe that anymore. And I'm actually really grateful to COVID for that because I don't know that I would have seen the value of that um, if I didn't have this time that I needed to stop and take stock of where I'm at in life and what I need and what my family needs um, and just let myself handle what needs to be handled in that moment and take care of myself with mindfulness and consciousness, I guess. So that's my little thought for the day, I guess. Um, I am so grateful to Dale for giving us an opportunity to continue, and Cindy, sorry, it's just Dale that I talk to, uh, to continue deepening our process even when we are separate and alone. I don't know about you guys, but I've gotten very sick and tired of being on the computer and it doesn't feed me. Um, I love the connection that it provides, but it doesn't feed my soul to be on a screen all day. So. Um, this is a nice way to deepen the process in little small snippets, still be connected, and someday hopefully um, back in that wonderful loft space, enjoying one another's company and learning from each other. Hope you're all doing well, staying well. I just love that video from Katie. It's funny, I, I love again the metaphor of that same path every day, but looking for something different. Yeah, yeah. And I was thinking about how COVID has been so much, you know, about sameness, but I don't know about you. There's also been a lot of surprises yeah. in it, even honestly, the way it all came, came on. Um, but in this time, just uh, about a month ago, my 90 year old mom came to live with us yeah. because her senior housing shut down. And there really are, you know, almost daily challenges um, with her care but there's also opportunities to love better, to do good. And that's really what Michelle Maher's video is about. And we'd like to share that with you now. Yes. I'm going to read an excerpt from a book by Jen Hatmaker. I'm going to let you look her up and her book up, but I'm going to read a section that I found very meaningful. This work begins in our minds, transfers to our expectations, materializes through our words, and emerges through our actions. You know when you see a woman who has done this work, she is full of joy and generosity. She loves herself well, which seems rare these days. She is hung up on exactly none of the garbage the rest of us are. She laughs and loves demonstratively. You never catch her absolving small behavior, but calling people to live big, love big, dream big, forgive big. You know her dreams because she is chasing them. She feels worthy of their importance. She employs healthy boundaries with people who prefer her subservience, and their disapproval doesn't define her. This alone feels miraculous, yes? She is absolutely certain, and you could not convince her otherwise, that everyone deserves goodness. And you won't catch a whiff of jealousy, schadenfreude, or superiority. 
She knows she is loved, so she knows everyone is loved, even when they don't know it and act out of brokenness. You know her because at some point she has probably loved you well. I am determined to be this woman. Join me. This isn't a COVID-specific message, more of an ongoing life message, which I like to think that COVID is just a part of the ongoing journey. It holds plenty of stories on its own, but I like to think about this for my current times, my future times, and it's just very empowering to me. Awesome. Love that, Michelle. Uh, we're so grateful, you know, for everybody in our Everyday Deep community, and we miss you. Um, mm-hmm. And we have, you know, obviously have not been able to see each other uh, this year. We appreciate all of you, and we um, especially appreciate those of you that reached out with your emails and your um, videos about what's been getting you through this uh, strange and challenging year. Um so from both of us, right? Yes. Happy yes. holidays. Merry Happy Christmas. Holiday. Happy New Year. Yes. Uh, we look forward to um, being with you again some, sometime, perhaps, um, in the new year. Yeah. So we have yeah, one love more. To all. Yes. Yeah. We have, um, we're going to let uh, Terry Baron Kulak close us out here with some wise words about the importance of trust, acceptance, and staying centered. Take good care. Bye, everybody. Hi, Everyday Deep community. My name is Terry Baron Kulat, and we were asked, what's getting you through 2020? So first, I'll say that uh, having a spiritual orientation to life has been essential. You know, personally, I trust that there is an intelligence that's greater than me, that keeps this planet spinning, keeps the flowers coming up every spring. And sometimes I don't understand it, but at least I trust that, call it God, call it the universe, call it divine order, source energy, whatever you wanna call it. There's something out there that's also in me that we're all related. It's a whole and it's evolving and changing and it understands it better than I do. So that's my first orientation. Secondly, I'm a person who has studied lots of philosophy, metaphysics, just generally trying to figure out how does life work. And my favorite system is astrology. Not that it's true, not that it predicts things, but it's a archetypal language that describes energy and movement and uh, the conditions, whether they're internal conditions, external conditions, You know, if we relate to the exterior world as a reflection of what's going on inside of you, that's one way to look at it. Um, But the answer is, I saw this coming. You know, a lot of us who watch these sorts of things knew that the energy of 2020 was going to be challenging. Uh, We didn't know exactly how it was going to be challenging. and, And you probably know people in your life that are challenged more than others and in different ways. So, um to me, I have used the skills of astrology more in that I believe the most important point in a chart is the center. So staying centered in this chaos has been important. And so I regularly meditate. I do my breathing um, with the goal of accepting whatever comes, whatever conditions are out there. We can follow the serenity prayer, right? Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the thing I can, and wisdom to know the difference. So for me, it means going in regularly to check in and say, you know, what is mine to do today? How can I be peaceful even in the in light of this adversity? And, you know, sometimes it works. Sometimes I get knocked off center and then, you know, you pick yourself up, you dust yourself off and you get back to it. So, and I really look forward to Dale, Cindy, when we can all get together in person again, because I do believe that humans are meant to interact with each other in person. So I look forward to that. But in the meantime, sending love to everyone and wishing you a very nice uh, rest of 2020.
Bye-bye. And hope in a better 2021. Thanks.